A woman is now killed every three days in the UK, and we are joined now by the Conservative MP Laura Farris and Carol Gould, who is the mother of murdered teenager Ellie Gould, to discuss whether enough has been done to tackle violence against women. First of all, thank you so much for coming in. Obviously, Laura, it's lovely to have you here, but I'm really very mm. happy and, you know, humbled, really, that you've taken the time out to come and talk to us on what I know must be a really difficult subject for you, so we really appreciate that. Thank you. OK. Thanks for having me. It's, it's important things to discuss. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, Laura, do you want to just talk us through your campaign and what's happening now? Yeah, well, thank you again for um, showing an interest in this issue. Um, this is the second part, really, of the campaign. We got the prohibition on the so-called rough sex defence, where it said that the victim consented to fatal injury uh, in the Domestic Abuse Act. And one of the things that campaigners and MPs felt at the time is that that was being used as, as a defence, often to avoid a charge of murder and to get manslaughter, and often actually having it framed by the court as an unfortunate accident uh, that was regrettable and probably partly her fault too. We got it into the Domestic Abuse Act, which made it a more serious offence. It was much more likely then to be charged as unlawful at manslaughter rather than gross negligence manslaughter. But there was still a string of cases where people were getting derisory sentences, less than you could get for pet theft, less even, actually, in one or two cases, the Sam Pibus case being an example, than the maximum you could get for non-fatal strangulation when he fatally strangled his victim. So I have been... I had a private member's bill, actually, and I've been hammering on the door of the MOJ to look again at sentencing on this and to create a new starting point that puts it into a higher sentencing bracket. And that's the effect of the announcement this week, that it, that it is likely, or the, the invitation will firstly be extended to the Sentencing Council, but there is a right to, for, for the MOJ to legislate if they don't, that the new starting point will be 8 to 12 years, so, so double figures uh, as a minimum. And I think that, you know must fairly reflect the gravity of the crime and, frankly, you know, the depravity of what's happened to the woman who has no opportunity mm -hmm. to give her side of, of mm -hmm. the case. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you say there that the minimum sentence of eight to ten years, it, it feels like, you know, it's extraordinary that's not happening already and hasn't happened already. Mm -hmm. um, pet theft, um, potentially getting more um, breathtaking, really. Um, Carol, you've been mm -hmm. campaigning, mm -hmm. obviously, um, since the death of your daughter. Can you just tell us a little bit about what happened to her? If, whatever you're comfortable with sharing, obviously. OK, so Ellie was in the sixth form. She was 17 years old and halfway through her A-levels. Um, she started dating a fellow student who was also in the sixth form. Um, it was a three-month relationship. It was her first boyfriend. Um, two months into the relationship, he then became controlling and she described to her friends that he was suffocating. Um, so she decided to end the relationship. She ended it on a Thursday evening. Um, she told me that she, she was going to do that. Um, and on the Friday morning, while she was at home revising, he came to our house. Um, he strangled her and then he picked up a knife and he stabbed her 13 times in the neck. Um, if that wasn't bad enough, he then focused completely on himself. He washed his DNA off of the handle of the knife. He then put her hand in the knife into her hand and reinserted it into her neck to make it look like suicide. And then he just walked out of our house as though nothing had happened, completely focused on himself, covering up his tracks. And then my husband came home in the afternoon and found his beloved daughter in a pool of blood on our kitchen floor. It's horrendous. And the sentence for that is 12 and a half years. 12 and a half years for the brutal murder of our precious daughter. 12 and a half that years. is the justice system when it comes to violence against women and girls. And, <laughs> sorry, do you want to ask I me just, another yeah, question? I just can't, yeah, 12 and a half... It's, it's disgusting. Is there, was there a reason... Well, number one, he was sentenced as a, as a child, as a 10-year-old, mm. despite being five years off his... five months off his 18th birthday. And secondly, because murders in the home are, are seen as a lesser crime. It doesn't matter how violent they are, they're, they're diminished. And um, as a result of this Claire Wade review, we're hoping to push through some much tougher sentencing. And what I would be saying to the government now, and Dominic Raab mm. is, You've not quite cut it yet, just offering um, aggravating factors for overkill and for 
um, and for coercive control in behaviour is not going to level up the sentencing. Mm -hmm. What we want, and we will be asking Minister Arga to consult on, is a 25-year starting point for overkill and for strangulation, because we have to remember that this is very much gendered violence mm. and it's just not being recognised in the courts how dangerous these perpetrators are. Can you just explain what overkill is? What, what is overkill? Well, it's the excessive use of excessive force use of in uh, homicide. Yeah. So uh, you may have strangled the person, but then you use a weapon to yeah. do much more than is necessary. Yeah. Yes, and that's a, in domestic mm. homicide, that's present in 60% of cases. I think what you say about gendered mm. killing and killings domestic, which you know, the, the phrase itself, domestic, feels mm. like yeah. completely the wrong mm. word to yeah. use in, in these senses as mm. well. I think that rings true with a lot of people, including mm. myself. Um, do you think that steps have been taken to, to recognise the, I guess, the injustices in the, in the system? Well, as a result of the Claire Wade review, now domestic homicides have been put in the spotlight. And thanks to her review, um, is now highlighting particular characteristics of these murders and how um, violent they are, how frenzied they are. Um, and, and as I say, what a public risk these perpetrators are to society. Um, but her recommendations don't go far enough. So we do have a meeting, hopefully, with Minister Arga after Easter. And we hope to discuss... Um, these things further with him and push these starting points to 25 years. I mean, I don't like to compare cases, but if you think of the high-profile case of Sabine and Essa, horrific murder, um, and that perpetrator received a sentence of 36 years, if you compare that to a domestic setting, the same amount of violence, the same amount of suffering to the victim, the same danger that these people pose, and... In the case of Poppy, the lady, the daughter of the lady that I campaigned with, his his sentence was 16 years. That's a 20-year difference. How is that? How is that? Just because one were, took place in a park and one took place in the home. What, what's your sort of take on this about the gendered nature of it? Yeah, well, I think it's really important that the government commissioned this review because when you read it, you realise it's the first time that that specific domestic context has been really mm. looked at and made a, an entire framework for a potentially new sentencing uh, regime. And one of the things I think that she really draws on is firstly the absolute breach of trust mm -hmm. that often is inherent mm. to these cases, sometimes happening, for example, when the victim is asleep. Yeah. Um, also, the presence of coercive control or some form of domestic abuse as a precursor Which, to the fatal offence. Before the, the behaviour before. And just yeah. also the existence in court of outdated language like battered women's syndrome, which is sort of an old fashioned word for what we would now understand as various forms of more nuanced domestic abuse like coercive control or economic control or other mm. things that have happened. And I just think it allows for a new framework where we recognise. Uh, the vulnerability that some women have after a long period. But she is also, I have to say, Claire Wade was also Sally Challen's barrister. Mm, mm. And so she is also very sensitive to the women who will, perhaps after a long history of domestic abuse, retaliate. And Sally Challen was, um, and her sons have done some amazing campaign amazing on this as well, campaign, right? Um, yeah. She mm. suffered domestic abuse for mm. many years and then went on to kill her husband. Kill her husband. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to create a new sentencing framework mm -hmm. that will factor in the various impulses that is fair to both sexes but recognises mm -hmm. the pre-existing feature of domestic abuse in a way that it can either aggravate or mitigate depending on how the crime unfolds. I just wonder if you want to take the opportunity to reflect a little bit on your daughter at all and Ellie and the kind of girl that she was and the kind of achievements that she had. I totally understand if you prefer not to, but... This is always the hard bit of any yeah, interview, you, but, um, yeah, Ellie was delightful. Prefer, but, she was yeah. delightful. She was really kind and caring, um, very thoughtful towards others. Um, her friends often described her as the glue amongst different friendship groups because she never liked anybody to be left out of anything. And she had a huge love for animals. Um, in the, you know, when she was young, we always visited farms to hold baby lambs, chicks. And then her passion... Um, went on to horses and um, she became a very, you know, an excellent equestrian um, rider and, you know, that, that was her passion at the weekends, riding her pony and competing and, yeah, and she had such a bright future ahead of her. You know, she was looking at joining the police force um, and she would have given so much to society and, uh, you know, it's just 
such a devastation that she's yeah. been taken from us. It sounds like the kind of person that would have been great in the police, definitely. She would have done. She was very balanced, very balanced. She'd even completed a piece of work as part of her A-level studies, ironically, on should child murderers be punished. Mm. And she received the results from that three days before her own murder. It's, it's really quite chilling. Um, thank you so much for coming on the programme. Um, you speak unbelievably eloquently in the most difficult of circumstances and, you know, you should feel that you're really making an enormous amount of change here. Well, I feel like we're on the first rung of the ladder. We've still got a big climb to go yet, but I hope the Conservative government are listening to us because we are really not going she's anywhere. Got, she's got her eye on you. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely are listening because the, 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 their initial response was interim. They've accepted mm. a number of Claire Wade's recommendations and there's going to be further consultation mm. on this. Mm. So It's a start. It's a positive start. Carol's voice is, of course, really <laughs> yeah. important. We Thank have been you. promised to be part of the consultation process, so we will hold them to that. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I don't have any doubt on that whatsoever. Um, thank you both so much for coming on the programme. Mm -hmm. It's like a real pleasure and a privilege for me to be able to talk about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. so thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you.